Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Update. It's the 17th of January, and it's the second time I've recorded this. Well, actually the first time I've recorded it, I went through all of this and then realized I didn't hit the record button. So uh, I'm a complete moron. As always, we have the chapters. Uh, so you can go and look at any particular update you care about the most. New videos this week, we continue on our journey of updating the Azure Masterclass on the V3. So I updated the identity module. It's nearly three hours long, so a lot of information. I also created a video on the new Azure Files provisioned V2 option. I talked about it in last week's Azure update, but I did a much deeper dive video going into it. And I also created a YouTube short version. So if you want a one minute uh, condensed information on that, you can go and check that out as well. So we did hit 300,000 subscribers. So really grateful as always uh, for everyone's support on that. And because we hit 300,000, uh, we're doing an Ask Me Anything session. That's where we just kind of have a bit of fun interacting. 22nd of January, 11 o'clock a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I did create a little YouTube short of me baking uh, the announcement cake. Obviously, as you'll tell pretty quickly, it wasn't me actually baking it. But if you want a little bit of fun, uh, you can go and check that out. So on to what's new. So app service session affinity with reverse proxy compatibility. So session affinity ensures that if I have a client, all of the requests it has go to the same backend instance where you have a multi instance backend for the entire life of its session. That's super important if there is some state that is local to that specific instance. Now, if I use a reverse proxy, i.e. some service in front of the app service that goes and makes the services available. I could have App Gateway, it could be Azure Front Door, something layer seven. Well, what I can now do is modify the cookie domain that's used to track the session affinity to match that with the forwarded host name from that reverse proxy. So imagine I have Azure Front Door and it's publishing the service as SavileTech.net. But my website on app service is azurewebsites.net, something azurewebsites.net, which is what the cookie would have been configured for. Now, when I enable this new capability, the cookie would now match my savletech.net, even though I'm calling azurewebsites.net domain from front door. And so without this new feature, that session affinity just would not work. Azure Container Apps now has JavaScript code dynamic sessions in preview. Remember, Azure Container Apps provides a platform for my container applications, my microservices that abstracts the underlying Azure Kubernetes service that it's running on, but it also adds things like Dapper, which adds very rich capabilities for microservices, uh, Keda for a better event-driven auto-scaling, some networking capabilities. And what dynamic sessions let me do is easily run some untrusted code in a, in this case, Hyper-V enabled isolated sandbox. Now, previously this capability was available for Python code and I could use custom containers, but now it includes uh, JavaScript. So really think of the scenario is maybe it's a user generated, user given code that I don't trust. Maybe it's even AI generated that I need to execute in a completely isolated environment. So that's what this solves. Then we have the AKS Kato RAG support in GA. So Kato is the Kubernetes AI toolchain operator that helps me deploy and manage AI models on AKS. With RAG support, i.e. retrieval augmented generation, it's now possible to add additional knowledge beyond what the model was trained on without having to add additional tuning by integrating with a vector database. Remember, vector database is a great because it's based on the semantic meaning of the data rather than the actual words in it, which is important for natural language. So with this, Kato can now integrate with my vector database. On the networking side, so App Gateway for containers now has WebSocket support. Remember, App Gateway for containers was built for AKS. And the only thing it has in common with regular App Gateway is the fact that it has App Gateway in the name, but it's a completely built from the ground up solution. 
It uses Kubernetes primitives, which makes it really intuitive for Kubernetes admins and developers to use it in that environment. And because it is built for AKS, it has a better resiliency and performance over the previous app gateway ingress controller that was part of and is part of the regular app gateway solution. So the WebSocket support has bi-directional communication between the clients and servers. And with that full duplex, you get a reduced latency, you get faster data transmissions. So if I am using WebSockets today on the regular app gateway ingress controller, the recommendation would be to migrate uh, to the app gateway for containers implementation. So on the storage side, so Azure Copilot now has disk performance troubleshooting. Remember Azure Copilot, like all of the Copilots, is there to help you in your function. In this case, my interactions with Azure. So the disk performance troubleshooting capability is available in preview, and it's gonna use the metrics available for your disk and also its connected VM to help you resolve any performance problems, uh, provide optimization guidance. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna look at the IOPS and the throughput metrics for the OS disk, any data disks, and the connected virtual machine. And once it has that data, I can ask it questions. Uh, why is my VM attached to disks running slowly? Uh, are there any bottlenecks affecting my disk performance? Can I optimize uh, my disk configuration? You get the idea. Azure Data Lake Storage, i.e. hierarchical namespace on my Blob Storage account and a secure FTP. Now I have customer managed unplanned failover. So customer managed failover lets the customer of a geo-replicated storage account, i.e. a GRS or a GZRS, to initiate the failover to the secondary region. The unplanned bit means I can do this even when the primary region is unavailable. Now this was previously only supported for blobs, tables, files, and queues, but now it has been extended to support that hierarchical namespace, either data lake and the SSH uh, FTP enabled accounts. On the database side, so Azure SQL Managed Instance now has storage service endpoint policy support. Service endpoints, remember, enable a specific subnet in a VNet to be known to the target service I specify for the service endpoint. What this lets me do is then enable on the firewall of that target path service to allow communication from things in that subnet. Service endpoint policies build on this to only allow the things in that subnet to talk to specific instances of that service. For example, only specific storage accounts. And that's really useful if I want to protect against data exfiltration, i.e. data going out to places I don't want it to. So it ensures a service can only talk to legitimate instances of that service. So now with SQL MI, I can leverage the storage service endpoint policies to ensure my SQL MI instance only talks to an approved set of storage accounts, i.e. I don't want to go and export in data to somewhere it shouldn't be. MySQL Flexible now has accelerated logs by default. So for any new instance I create, the accelerated logs will be the default option. I can also enable it on any existing server, um, but there will be a restart when I want to support that. I think the business critical can also support this uh, with customer managed key. And the accelerated logs is really all about reducing the commit latency and with that, it improves the throughput potentially up to double. And the great thing is that there's no extra cost for this. So there's not a downside in going and turning this on. MySQL Flexible also now has user managed plugins. So it's a new plugin management framework that gives you the control over the plugins you're leveraging. Now, initially, this is just for validate password plugin. So that would let me either enforce or not enforce strong password policies and it doesn't require a reboot to actually go and do that. So on to miscellaneous. This has been communicated for a really long time, but the Microsoft Online and the Azure AD PowerShell modules have been deprecated, I think since March 2024. They're end of support, end of March this year. So you need to go and get your code off of these, go and migrate to the Microsoft Graph PowerShell module, or um, if I prefer the look and feel 
of the Azure AD module, you can use the Microsoft Entra new PowerShell module that's still built on Microsoft Graph, but it has a, a better compatibility and feel uh, with that module. But the important thing is, get off of it. Uh, Azure Confidential Ledger now has SOC 2 Type 2 compliance. So the point of the Confidential Ledger is it's built on blockchain. And the big deal about blockchain is it provides this tamper-proof unstructured data store that is backed by cryptographically verifiable evidence for every transaction that I commit against it. It also runs in a trusted execution environment. And the upshot of that is where I need guaranteed data integrity and I want encryption at rest, encryption in transit and encryption in use, this is a phenomenal solution. The SOC 2 Type 2 certification is a really rigorous standard for data security, availability, uh, processing integrity, privacy, confidentiality. And it just shows that the Azure Confidential Ledger has implemented the most robust controls and processes to help protect uh, that customer data. Microsoft announced the M365 Copilot chat capability. So this is a free option. It uses GPT-4.0 model today. It's grounded on either the information it can reason over and inference over is the training data that the model was trained on and web data, but not your work data. That would be the M365 paid copilot. Now, the blog article that announced it has a nice image that goes through all of the differences. If we scroll down, you can see that the, really the big deal is notice this missing box here. And that missing box is work grounded data. So that's why I would still need the M365 Copilot. But one of the really great things here, even the free offering, I still get enterprise data protection, IT management controls for your org agent management. And I can still create agents. And if they're grounded in web data, they are free. But then I can use a provisioned um, and sort of as you go consumption basis for user agents grounded in work data and that are acting independently, i.e. an autonomous agent. And those would be consumption based. So it's going to consume messages from a Copilot Studio message pack, or I do have the pay as you go option as well, but it's going to go and consume those things. But it's a nice uh, free option you now have available. Windows 365 Frontline now has a shared mode in preview. So what Frontline does is it allows three employees to share a single license based on the assumption they have staggered working hours. I could imagine I had three employees with eight hour shifts over a 24 hour period. They're not using it at the same time, but they get a personalized experience, i.e. saving their user profile. What the new Frontline shared mode does is it's designed to be accessed on a way more ad hoc intermittent basis by employees. It doesn't have any durable personalization, i.e. their user profile is deleted every time they log out. But what that does is it lets me use a way larger number of employees to share that license, still only one at a time. And in preview, there is no fixed number of employees, but I would expect that to firm up when it actually GAs. So think about maybe I've got a cloud PC that I can use to go and get inventory data. Well, now anyone on the shop floor could just go to a box that connects that cloud PC, check the inventory, sign out, and the next person could go to it. So I could have a way higher number of people uh, going and sharing that license. Uh, the Azure AI Image Analysis 4.0 Preview API is retiring end of March. You just need to migrate to the Image Analysis 4.0 GA API. And also the Fabric Runtime 1.1 is retiring again end of March. So the runtime is used for the execution, the management of your data engineering, your data science experiences. You need to go and get to the 1.3 runtime. That incorporates Apache Spark 3.5, Delta Lake 3.2, and a bunch of other stuff as well. And that was it. Um, great doing this for the second time. <laughs> but as always, thank you for watching. Until next video, take care.